Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. The news with CentOS recently has a lot of people talking and other people actually taking action. Now, the makers of Cloud Linux OS, Cloud Linux, have decided to take action. And they have come up with Alma Linux, and we are going to take a look at the very first beta of this upcoming distribution in this video right here, right now. Now, full disclosure. Cloud Linux has been a sponsor of Learn Linux TV for a while now, but they are not a sponsor of today's video. In fact, they had no idea that I was even going to do this video, so if anyone from Cloud Linux is watching this video, surprise! But actually, the reason why I'm doing this video is because I had some time to kill and I was curious about it. I saw that the first beta was out and I decided I wanted to give it a shot. And if I'm going to give it a shot, why not make a video about it? So here we are. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and check out Alma Linux Beta 1. All right, so here we are on my laptop. And as you can see here, I have Alma Linux installed. And this is the lock screen right here. So let's get the screen unlocked and check it out. And here we are on the default GNOME desktop. So first of all, let's talk about the installation process, and then we'll talk about the distribution in more detail. Now, if you have ever installed CentOS in the past, then you'll know what to expect when you install this distribution. The installation process is essentially the same as CentOS 8, which makes sense. This is a fork of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which CentOS was also a fork of, and the installation process works just fine. So what I did was work through the various categories of the installation screen, and I configured everything just the way I wanted it. I decided to install the GNOME desktop, which is not really common for a server, and the target audience is going to be more so for servers with Alma Linux. But for me, having a desktop environment makes the process of recording the screen a lot easier. Now, what's interesting is that even though I did select the option to install the GNOME desktop environment, GNOME wasn't actually installed when I went to reboot my laptop. And just to make sure that I didn't do anything wrong, I did repeat the installation again. I chose the same options, and sure enough, GNOME was not installed. Now, this is the very first beta, so rough edges like this are expected, so that didn't bother me too much. I just went to the command line, and I installed GNOME manually, and I was good to go. And, as you can see here, GNOME is installed and ready to go. Now, it may not seem like it's a big deal to have GNOME installed, but for me, it actually is. My experience with enterprise Linux distributions, of which Alma Linux is one, is that getting a display server and a desktop environment installed is not always straightforward. If you think about it, laptops and desktops have all kinds of different hardware configurations out there, and distributions in this class are not really catered towards laptops and desktops, but actually everything works out of the box. I have attempted to run Debian Stable on this same laptop, it's a ThinkPad X1 Extreme, and that didn't work out so well. In fact, I couldn't even get it to boot. But Alma Linux had no problem with that whatsoever, and I didn't need to install any proprietary drivers in order to get something on my screen. And what's even more awesome, if I go up here, we can see that I am connected to my wireless network. So. Even though I didn't expect Alma Linux to cater towards laptops or desktops at all, I was very pleasantly surprised to see how well this actually works. And what's even more interesting is that this is the first beta of Alma Linux, so the fact that it works at all is actually a great thing. It's very stable and solid so far when it comes to a beta distribution. And considering that this is a beta, it's surprisingly far along overall. I mean, just look at the wallpaper. They customized the wallpaper. The logo was there on the installation screen. At this stage of a Linux distribution's development, it's not uncommon to have some placeholder graphics, but it's actually surprisingly complete. 
and the performance is pretty good as well. So for example, if I open up a file manager, that was pretty fast. I've also added GNOME software to the installation as well. And with GNOME software, I can install any application that I'd like through the categories here. And so far, everything I've tried works fine. We even have updates here already. So if I click on download, we can see what the process of installing updates looks like. In fact, I'll go ahead and restart it right now to finalize the updates. And now I'm back. And here we can see the welcome screen for GNOME. It didn't show up the first time because I installed GNOME after the fact. But since it's here, we may as well have a click through. Now, if you've ever used a GNOME distribution before, then this welcome screen is probably going to look very familiar to you. It's just giving you the opportunity to set up the initial configuration for your installation. And I'm just going to speed right through this. And now we are back at the Alma Linux desktop. So I already showed you GNOME software, which is right here. I've just installed all of the updates, which happened very quickly. And you can also see some of the applications that I've installed. So we have Firefox, we have GNOME Boxes. And they've even gone ahead and changed the Firefox start page to the official website for the distribution, which is pretty cool. And if we scroll down, we can see some information about the distribution here. And this guy right here, he's trouble, so watch out for him. I don't know why they put him on the page, but anyway. We have some information that pertains to this distribution, which was previously known as Project Linux. But actually, overall, I think that everything is surprisingly complete. And right here, we even have a link to the GitHub page for Alma Linux, which is awesome. And I really like that they've added a bookmark to their official GitHub page for this project. After all, community involvement is very important to this distribution. And having a link right to their GitHub page is a great way to encourage people to poke around and check out the code. That's pretty cool. And we also have a link here to the bug tracker. I'm also very happy to see that as well. So if you find any issues with Alma Linux, then you should go ahead and submit a bug report. After all, that's the entire point of releasing a beta for an upcoming distribution to get community members involved, encourage people to submit bug reports, and make the distribution better, which is exactly what you should do if you are interested in contributing. We have a blog here as well. So some information there that you might want to check out. And then we also have a link to the official documentation for this project. And I'll leave it up to you to go through these links and check them out. But so far, I am very impressed with this. So if we take a look under the hood. And go to Settings. And then Details. You can see here some information about the laptop that I'm running this on. And the version number of Alma Linux is currently at 8.3. I have 32 gigs of RAM on this laptop, and it has a Core i7 CPU and a one terabyte SSD. So if you guys are curious about the performance, it's mostly idle right now. You can see that there's not a whole lot going on. And that's a good thing, actually, because if there was a lot going on here, if my computer is idle, then this should be as well. So there isn't a lot of overhead here on this machine for running the desktop environment, which is very welcome. Now, if I bring up a terminal, we can see that under the hood we have kernel 4.18, which honestly is a little old, but that's to be expected. When it comes to enterprise class Linux distributions, it's not about being bleeding edge, it's about being stable. And I guess that makes it even more surprising that all of my hardware on this laptop works out of the box. Normally when you have an older kernel, then you also have older drivers as well. So whether the work was put in upstream at Red Hat, 
or the developers of Alma Linux are responsible. Either way, I'm happy to see that some work has gone into making this distribution work fine on a laptop, which means you can actually run the same distribution on your laptop as you do your server. And that's awesome. Now I am very excited to check out Alma Linux when the beta phase is over and the final release is published. But already, here we are at beta 1 and I am very impressed. The only issue that I ran into was that I checked the GNOME checkbox on the installer at the very beginning and it didn't actually install GNOME. But that really wasn't a problem because installing GNOME manually was very easy to do. And I'm very pleasantly surprised to see that the hardware support, at least on my system, is in a very good state at this stage of development, and it's far better than I expected it to be at this stage. So I have to admit, I am pleasantly surprised when it comes to the first beta of Alma Linux. I actually expected more crashes, more problems. I mean, I've checked out a lot of betas over the years of upcoming distributions of Linux, and this is one of the more stable. Now, I'm not telling you guys to go out and install this on your production servers just yet, but what I am saying is that it's in a very promising state for this stage of its development. Now, I'm going to reserve final judgment for the final release when that becomes available, but for now, let me know what you guys think of all the Linux so far in the comments down below, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.